Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Tunisia Locks, Beauty Tips and Potpourri. How are all of my wonderful butterflies and perfect people out there? Thank you to all of my subscribers, to my tribe, to my kindred spirits, to all of you all who have had the patience with me and watching these videos till the end, giving your thumbs up, your likes, your shares, your comments. I've learned so much from you. I am so grateful. I had no idea when I embarked upon putting up videos about my hair that it was going to turn into this. I really had no idea, but I have met some wonderful people, some wonderful women. I just want to give a shout out to all of you all, but Miss T comes to mind, Shay comes to mind, Miss Deborah. Uh, more recently comes to mind, Lunice, shout out to you. I hope that you enjoy the chill magic and that it helps you relax or fall back asleep in the middle of the night or get into your zen, your happy space and sort of release the troubles of the day. That's on the IamMelaninMagic.com website. It's a, it's a product that is back in stock to sort of help you relax and deal with anxiety, nervousness and just to help you feel more soothed and at ease. But anyway, I'm so happy to be here with you all. Um, don't forget to give the, the video for those of you who are new, subscribe to the channel or give it a thumbs up, comment or share. Today I wanted to talk about something that's, that's important um, to me because I'm in the business of today, literally, and the practice of trying to circumvent or minimize the things that we do as a matter of routine that jeopardize our hair, that weaken it, and that uh, subject it to um, a sort of uh, deterioration over time, whether it's in thinning, whether it's in balding, whether it's in um, things related to our root bed, our grid, um, holes, locks in the locks and different things like that. I am by no means an expert. What I do is come on here and share my experiences, those that I have actually had with regard to my, my journey of over 10 years, but also the things that I learn and the, the things that I deduce based on an investigation and study of my experience and the data in the way of information that you all give me. All right. I must say I have been negligent with my I am melanin magic and so my hair is growing very slowly this month. I am about maybe, I've been really negligent. I gotta get back on it. I gotta get back on my oil routine and my regimen. Ever since she married my locks, I've been off track. <laughs> I'm just joking, but really, when I don't use my, my oils the way I used to use them, like a religion, I worship those oils, y'all. Thank God I did otherwise. Uh, a lot of the breakage and stuff that I've had would have been far, far, far worse and my hair would not be as healthy and getting thicker as the days go on. But um, I have to say that um, what I learned has a lot to do with the direct experience. So I speak from my experience alone. That's the caveat. The disclaimer is that there's no one remedy for a diverse array of experiences that we all have. We all have a different energetic imprint, so it's important that you figure out what works for your hair. But there are some things that we do that can weaken our hair, and that's what I wanna talk about today, give you 17 things that you need to be aware of that can weaken your hair that you just wanna be careful of. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these 17 things. I can promise you that a minute and a half top so by 27 minutes this video should be done that's albie excuse us the first thing is wringing your your locks out like this when you are washing your hair um you want to be careful of doing this 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 tears fibers it also um affects the 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 hair's ability to to, to be uh resilient and bounce back when you do this on a regular basis it breaks the fibers of your hair and can result in thinning Oh, by the way, this is a beautiful piece of lock jewelry. Um, Shay on the channel, shout out to you, Shay. This is beautiful, y'all. You guys have got to check out her lock jewelry. I, this has been in my hair now for, ooh, maybe about two weeks. I just love it. Look at that. Semi-precious gemstones uh, and beads and just absolutely marvelous. She's got small ones. She's got bigger ones. She has a bridal jewelry um, line very well worth it and and she has been kind enough to send me several of these and i have been wearing them with pride 
I'll put the link to, to, to how to get in touch with Shay so that you can get these if you decide you like them. But anyway, number one. So I gave you number one. So number two is when your locks are married, which they no doubt will, because that's the whole purpose of locks is they lock up, they entangle, they embed, they marry. To just snatch them apart, y'all, I've done that way uh, more often than not in my desire to rush. I am kind of a speedy Gonzalez if you have not noticed, but you want to be, you want to be mindful. You want to spray some water or an oil. Um, I am on the magic.com would be a good oil, but any kind of oil can do this, but a detangling oil or give your hair some moisture as you gently and slowly separate the hairs all right that can happen after a few weeks of retightening they kind of start to look for their mate again and the important thing to remember is when you do this very slowly you'll realize the hair when it's healthy is more pliable it's a lot more elastic so if you're separating your hair and you're hearing it pop your hair is in need of well, your hair is in arrested development, but it is in need of intervention, some type of intervention. Um, you should be able to feel that hair kind of give way like a rubber band. And if you do it gently enough, you can pull the hair that is locked into the other one, even when it's locked more than, uh, let me say, uh, one point. It's locked maybe two or three points or even a rotation or it's just embedded. You can really kind of pry it out you be surprised if you take your time and of course if your hair is healthy if you're having difficulty please spray please use water next waiting too long between retightenings is just as bad as getting them too often i talk about that tons on the channel look at some of my other videos you gotta find what works for you i will still always stand by whether too frequently or too infrequently it is the quality of the retightening that makes the most difference number four actually ah. Uh, no, that was number three, but on here I said number four. So actually we may have less um, than 17, probably have less than one. But putting in products that weigh your hair down, this is a big one, y'all. Putting in products that weigh your hair down and or not thoroughly washing your hair. Even if you're using essential oils and lighter oils, all right, but you allow them to lay on your hair and they pile up and you do a trifling washing or you don't take your time to really wash your hair. Over time, whatever's in that bottle, the weight of what's in that bottle is going to be on your head. It's going to cause your locks to feel heavier. So uh, thorough washing in between whenever the times are that you're not washing your hair, thorough washing in between application of oils is very important as in not putting heavy products on your hair that weigh it down. Don't choose things like if your hair is not excessively dry on a regular basis, don't do things like shea butter and cocoa butter and some of those really heavy oils that are also non-commodogenic. No, that are commodogenic. Sorry. Next. Number uh, five, picking lint. This was my OCD pastime. Did it, y'all, for the first, what, seven years like a religion. I do it every now and then, much less than I have to because I've changed the way I care for my hair. And the biggest thing for me was um, just being haphazard, not shaking my hair out on a regular basis. I don't sleep with a cat, but I'm gonna start doing that again. But my hair is doing really well with lint. And then I began, you know, I changed the formula to the oil. It's much lighter, but at the time that still would have sufficed. It's just that my hair needs less uh, heavy oil. I don't, I don't have that problem the way I used to. But on top of that, even when I was using that oil, I was not washing adequately. And it's not so much about the frequency of washing as it is making sure that you thoroughly wash your hair and periodically use a clarifying shampoo. It took me many years to learn that because you need to, when you, when you do that, like I was at a point about four years ago wanting to cut my hair because it was just feeling too heavy, especially in the back. It was pulling on my neck. My neck was starting to bother me. And I happened to be at, Jeju Spa and this lady I ended up talking to her and so I was sitting there the whole time washing and rinsing washing and rinsing did it for about over an hour and when I got up I was like oh my god when my hair dried I was like oh it was it relieved so that's when I realized well girl how many bottles of oil have you put on your hair and where did you think it was going because y'all know I'm big on infrequent washing 
but thorough washing is something that you really want to be mindful of okay i'm going to go on next ignoring signs of brittle and dry locks and not taking some sort of intervention you can tell when your hair is starting to break you can tell when you're starting to, to have thin locks even if it's one or two or it's in a particular area you can tell you have to take steps to intervene okay you absolutely have to pay attention to your babies and you cannot sit around and let your house catch on fire and expect it not to burn down okay next number number seven switching locticians too often hopping 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 around the different people um more out of a preference rather than a necessity clearly there are times when we have to have a different loctician because we're not satisfied with what the one we are with is doing or for some reason we move we relocate but hopping around the different people is not a good idea it's like taking your kid to different babysitters eventually they're going to experience some sort of trauma or some sort of instability and for all you know they may grow up being a nomad because they don't feel home so you need a routine you need consistency this is also what is going to help you to diagnose and investigate problems and provide solutions when your hair starts to do things that you know um, should be a concern to you you can pinpoint things a lot easier if you're not hopping around okay um so this this brings me to point number eight which is um like i said not um monitoring or 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 taking action when you do see that something is going on if you see you have a ton of thinning locks in one area and you don't address that or you're starting to notice thinning in various areas thinning in the middle of the lock not so much thinning up here and you don't rescue that early then over time hair is going to break down it's going to get weak if you start noticing you have dry scalp which is what I used to deal with immensely, which is what was the mother of invention when it came to the I Am Melanin Magic brand. It started with an oil that I created for myself to deal with itchy and uh, flaky dandruffy area in this part of my head when I moved down to the south from Philadelphia and then New Jersey. And I started uh, having issues with my hair. Uh, you have to hop on something because a dry itchy flaky scalp eventually can affect your follicles which will eventually cause your hair to break is that a gray hair yeah that's gray i thought that might have been a piece of lint but that's gray so you want to be careful of that number dot number nine hairstyles that are too tight which also is um it can be frequent hairstyling your hair but also when you're styling it hairstyles that are just pulling your hair too tight i see people with locks that actually corn roll them for styles. Um, that's something that if you do it, you wanna do it, let it be the exception rather than the rule. You don't wanna be doing that every day, it's not good. Um, the other thing, and this is really important, not number 11, number 10, not understanding the difference between the type of things you need to pay attention to with your locks when your hair is short and mid-length versus when it starts to get longer. Yes, there are different things that you need to be aware of when your lock, locks start to grow beyond like shoulder length or an inch or two beyond that. There, there are a lot of different things that you have to be aware of. You're longer into this journey. The locks are gonna be different then. They will have compressed. Um, you, you, you're gonna be dealing with the, the uh, risks that are associated with more length you're going to be dealing with as time goes on things that that come about as a result of hormonal changes or just hair becoming less resilient and so many other things so be mindful of the different hair care needs based on where you are in the journey number um 11 color can be can be problematic although it's not always problematic i mean you can see this uh, but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna know that you color because your hair is gonna respond to it. So you need to be prepared for that. Bleaching is something you want to be extremely prepared uh, for in terms of dryness, breakage, difference in texture. If you're gonna move forward with something like bleaching, I definitely have seen too many people bleach, and although they try to do everything to build the hair back up after they broke it down, just locks start falling out. So I'm one that says avoid bleaching. Um, frequent coloring you want to be careful about that as well number 12 not marrying the locks early enough now we marry and we combine to have a better life and to protect ourselves from the elements right 
Back in the day, that's why people got married, for strength, for family strength. The same is, is true when you have a lock that's really, really struggling because it has thinned. Regardless of why it's thinned, unless you're going to isolate that lock and pay attention to that lock. I have one in my head like that, that I'm trying to figure out what it was I did to cause this or what has caused this. But unless you, so I've isolated that lock and I pay attention to that lock and I'm watching the hair around it grow so that they can thicken back up, okay? But unless you're going to pay attention to that lock and baby that lock, you're going to need to give that lock a stronger foundation, which means you need, you may want to make the choice to marry it with a neighboring lock. If you don't feel like when that hair grows back and thickens up, it's going to make that, um, that part of your grid too thick. If you're someone that really likes your locks thin and your locks are very thin, you're going to have certain complications if you start experiencing thinning because your locks are already thin. So to me, when they are thinner than what they might, how do I say this? Because everybody's hair is different. If your locks are thinner than what is ideal for your density and volume, you're going to have to take particular care as you go further into the journey to watch for thinning and to decide how, what kind of intervention you're going to take to, 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 um, strengthen the lock. As long as the hair is continuing to grow, um, you can always marry a lock, all right? Or you can choose to uh, provide some rescue to that lock, monitor it. But the key is to determine whether or not the hair around it is still growing. Now, this is a different situation for those of you who have, who have uh, root beds or follicles that have been so abused and your hair has been retightened too tight and you're wearing tight hairstyles and you're still trying to pull on your hair even though your hair is crying out for mercy and then you really have lost a lot of hair and your hair is really not growing without some sort of product or intervention you are not the group that i'm talking to while there are some things that you should try marrying to another lot may not help at all marrying to another lot might actually stress the lock that you're trying to strengthen, depending upon how far you have to pull it and what the gap is between the two locks in terms of hair loss and spacing. So you want to watch out for that. I'm trying to keep up with my own time limit. I'm at 17 and I'm doing good. All right. Um, next one. Number 13. Too many rotations. Rotations, rotations. Was that movie uh, coming to America where he was like, donations, donations, rotations, rotations. Too many rotations, y'all, just take you further to the scalp. And while you're sitting in the chair, you can't always realize how tight it is, but the stress starts once you leave. Going that close to the scalp and trying to get that lactician, trying to get that last full rotation in may not be what you need. Over time, it's that type of abuse that is going to create long-term issues and potentially alopecia that may or may not be able to be reversed. Look, if you got to pay more, if you got to go a little more often, if your hair has to feel a little looser, Okay, and you have to have this look, which is the look that I love, y'all. I never like the plucked chicken look anyway. Avoid retightening too tight to the scalp. That last rotation could be the death of you. Number 14, too much manipulation of your hair, especially in high traffic areas, okay? You know that if you run your, if you walk over an area of your grass too much, it can eventually lose the grass, right? Y'all have heard me talk about Albie have a swamp in my backyard and have a track built within one day of constant eight hours of going back and forth on the trolley. She's a special dog. That's my non-melanated baby. But she is my baby nonetheless. Y'all probably can right here or go crazy because here comes the male lady. Who, by the way, she kind of chased out back into the truck. Shame on me. I was cleaning the house after the beautiful afternoon, had the doors open. I was putting up the fence to keep her away from the front of the house. And she got through there and all I heard was some screaming. And I was like, oh God, dear God. So I got a call, a personal call from the post office, which is less than, what, 500 yards down the street. It was funny, but I love my male lady. I had to give her some I am melanin magic as a complimentary gift. But um, yeah, so, so you know 
that you know anything that is a high traffic area receives more abuse, right? Because it creates more friction. And friction can be a good thing in certain areas if you're trying not to slip, but friction creates breakage. Albie! Oh, she's out front because she was in here with me. We don't have Albie, come in here. She will jump up on the blinds. This dog. Albie, come. I'm so sorry. Come in here. Stay, sit down. God. This rascal has torn up many a blind. Let me close this door. So you want a high traffic area, which are usually oh, high traffic areas. Sorry about that. High traffic areas, y'all, which are usually the edges. Okay, usually around the back area. These are areas where you don't want a lot of manipulation. If you're pulling your hair up in the center a lot and it's very tight up here, you need to be careful of that. You want to limit the amount of manipulation in high traffic areas. If you're someone that just sits and does this, this is traffic in a high, this is manipulation in a high traffic area. You wanna be careful of that, all right? And then I have, I already had this one up here. I'm going to change my, uh, yeah. So next we have number 15, um, trying to clean up a botched grid too late in the game. And this is what I mean about that. So let's just say you had a loctician who didn't do your grid justice. Y'all know I'm not obsessed about the grid. I've changed mine. I've separated lots. I've done things over the years, which I'm glad that I did because it helped in the presentation and the way my locks looked. But let's say, for example, and I'm just showing y'all my grid while I'm talking. But let's say somebody botched up your grid or it's not straight. Some of y'all need to see. It's just got to be perfectly straight. You got to remember, you have new hairs growing in all the time. So it's not just keeping that, that little lock straight. It's also being able to pull in the straight hairs in a way that keep the grid perfect. I've seen some perfect grids. Mine is not one of them. And that's not because of anything he fried did. That's on me. Oh my gosh, is that gray? <gasps> the gray hair is very unruly, and that's a new pe new piece coming out of my scalp. Look at that, y'all. What? <gasps> Look at that. Now that's a rebel. That's why people say gray hair. It, it just does whatever the hell it wants to do. So y'all can imagine me going back through the rebellious teen stage soon. But you can see how good this looks, right? I think this looks good back here, right? So here we go. You're trying to clean up a grid. So you let somebody go through your hair and they're straightening up the grid and they're pulling hairs and they're snapping maybe with scissors or snapping with their hands, but they're trying to straighten the grid up. While you may not see any thinning with that retightening or maybe the next, after that, you're going to start to realize the price that you paid for trying to fix up that botched grid. Sometimes it's better to let the hair do what the hair has to do if fixing the grid is going to be causing, if your grid is really jacked up and if it's going to cause too much manipulation and having to take hairs from other um, locks and do all of that because it really got kind of jacked up, you might want to rethink that, okay? Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the lack of TLC, all right? TLC, tender love and care, okay? A lot of things come into play when we talk about tender love and care. Okay, we talk about all the things that you have to do. See, it didn't come off. We talk about all the things that you have to do so that if these were your babies, they would know that they were loved. If they were real, and they are real, they are a living force. They have life force energy running through them. They pick up and assimilate your energy and your frequency. This is real, this, these are facts. But it needs to be nurtured. It needs to be healed when sick. It needs to be treated kindly. Talking to your locks, loving on them is, is one form of energy, energetic love and way that you can show your hair that you love on it. And trust me, just putting your healing hands on your hair and sending yourself positive energy is it's a real thing, y'all. I'm so serious. When we talk about the world of manifesting health, our cells, the energy at the subatomic level, which is what energy is, it's at the subatomic level, it is consciousness and consciousness creates form. So the way you love on your hair, the way you talk to your hair is just one aspect of it. What you think about your hair is another aspect of it. How you treat it physically. Are you doing timely retightenings? Are you noticing when one of your locks is in trouble? Do you pay attention to what's going on? Are you making sure that your hair 
is getting some sort of uh, um, uh, some sort of um, the products that you put on your hair. Are you making sure that your hair is, is receiving benefit from those products? Do you need to change a product that you're using on your hair? Are you noticing that there's a certain area of your hair or a certain lock that is simply not thriving? All of those kinds of things are super important, making sure you love on your hair. 17, that brings me to my last point, which is understanding that we do not live in a perfect world. You do not have a, 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 a ready-made natural source of alkaline water. We deal with pollutants. We deal with the things that are environmentally harmful to our hair. We deal with the element of the sun. We deal with you know friction from clothes rubbing up against our hair, the sheets we sleep on, the, the towels we use, the pillowcases and so forth and so on. Know that the same way you can't just eat junk food and you have to reach out for vegetables, but not only reaching out for vegetables now, we have to watch the quality of vegetables that we get. And oftentimes we have to supplement with herbs and minerals and vitamins in order to make sure that we get what we need. Your hair is no different. You don't just have to do the outer stuff. You have to do the inner stuff. You have to do a combination of both to make sure that your hair um, does not suffer over time from weakening. The hair is like a moving body part. It's like a machine. It's like the body it grows tired. At different times and phases in the journey, your hair may need more from you depending upon what you're dealing with in your life. During particularly stressful periods, you may need to baby your hair. During the summer months, if you're someone that doesn't use oils at all, you may need to oil your hair. You may need to use a mist on your hair. All right. If you're just coming out of chemotherapy or you're dealing with some other health situation, your hair is going to need support in order for you to build its capacity to be resilient and bounce back. You, at some point in your journey, are going to have to consider putting something on your hair the same way you will put something on your skin to keep it pliable, soft, the same way you would use something on your face in order to um, help cell turnover and renewal and to give you more of a glow. It's important to know that your locks will weaken over time if you do absolutely nothing. I don't care how resilient your lock is, your, your hair is, or how great your genetics are, barring if you just absolutely did nothing, which is why men don't typically have the problems that we as women do because they don't manipulate and touch their hair. They barely do anything. And it's the doing of nothing that produces everything. But when you're manipulating your hair all the time, we're wanting to have those um, bomb retightenings. You wanting it to look a certain way. You're putting curls in. You're doing all these different things. You have to put into your hair what you want to get out of your hair. And if you haven't put anything into that hair bank account, when it's time to withdraw something and your hair needs something to lean on, there's not going to be anything. So in addition to your regimen, consider what you can put in your hair or within your diet to help strengthen your locks for the long term. You're with Tunisia Ali, okay? And if you like my energy and you want to check me out on my spiritual channel, go to Butterfly Transformations. You can also join me on Patreon. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. If you're interested in the um, Magical Hair Growth Serum for people that are experiencing like thinning and balding, not at an alarming rate where you have no hair left on your head, but you're willing to try something different and all natural, give the Magical Hair Growth Serum a try. So many of you. Uh, con connect with me literally uh, via text and you tell me some of the amazing results that you're getting and I'm so happy for you for those of you that are getting great results use others of you uh, are trying the magical just the premium uh, melanin magic uh, hair oil which comes in the spray bottle which is something that you can use for uh, multi uh, times a week multi weekly or even daily um, what do you want to call maintenance of your locks, but it also has resulted in many of you growing hair back in places that you didn't have for years. So it, although that is a beautiful side effect of it, that was not the direct reason why I created the blend, but naturally anything that is going to bring health to your hair um, is also going to help it to grow because your hair will grow when it's healthy. So that is a blend that is very synergistically, um, 
able to restore your hair's uh, softness or to help it with softness if it doesn't restore it, to give your hair a better chance to grow and bounce back by making it more resilient, by helping to stimulate the growth and the health, the growth of your hair by way of uh, helping your follicles, all right? So that is very, very important. And then also giving your hair a nice and clean scalp because it's antibacterial and antifungal in which to grow, which is very important. The scalp um, is critical to making sure that our hair is healthy. So we need the kind of products that are natural, that also don't have other ingredients in them that tend to dry our hair out. We need to just give our hair the best possible odds of of growing and being healthy and abundant, which is really, I think, for most of us, what this uh, sister lock or micro lock journey was all about anyway, abundant hair with less hassle. So take the time to invest in the things that you need to do for your hair. I hope that this video reaches you and that you are open to some of the suggestions and that and it in some way has enriched your day. I love y'all. I'm grateful for y'all on so many levels. Um, I hope that you are feeling peaceful, productive, and prosperous. I hope that you are enjoying the beautiful uh, spring that is here and looking forward to the summer. I hope that you're feeling positive. I hope that you're not allowing anyone to rain on your parade. I hope that you always remember that don't know one, one monkey, stop, no show. I hope that you remember that you are the co-creator of your reality and it is what you think and feel that determines what you manifest out here in this world as above, so below. If you wanna change your world, change what is within you and you will see the world respond to your commands. I love you so much. Thank you again. And don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to the channel. Hey ladies, do you love the way your skin looks and feels? I know I do because I am using the I Am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum. And at 50, I love the way my skin looks and feels. This blend is bomb. It renews, revitalizes, rejuvenates, soothes, conditions, moisturizes, tones, brightens, and fades all in one step. So if you're ready to get your glow on, go get you some I Am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum. If you are not using Melanin Magic hair oil, then what are you using? Hi, I'm the creator of the I Am Melanin Magic skin and hair care brand. The I Am Melanin Magic hair oil is our premier product. It is the leading high-end supplement for your mane. It reduces breakage and promotes growth and can be used on all hair types and looks, from straightened hair and micro locks to wigs and protective styles. It's antifungal, antibacterial, and it's antifungal. So you know you're protected. It softens and conditions your hair, and it's anti-frizz too. Hey guys, so I started using this oil called I Am Melanin Magic since February of this year, and check out the new growth. Like, it's insane. Not only did it help with my new growth, but it smells amazing too. See the dramatic improvements Denisha has made after not having hair around her edges for three years. Tanya's hair had been like this for almost 20 years and while getting injections. Her doctor said it was scarred and would never grow back. After four weeks of using I Am Melanin Magic, this is what she looked like. I Am Melanin Magic did this to Danette's hair after a short time. This is really all your hair needs. It's rich with antioxidants, loaded with growth promoting ingredients. Look at the growth of my hair. It's amazing, the product speaks for itself. Order yours today and don't delay. Don't delay, purchase yours today. I am Melanin Magic and so are you.